Reading lesson 120, video part one. Column one, word one, glorified. Two, initiation. Three, tranquil. Four, respectable. Five, biography. Six, biographical. Let's do them again. Glorified. Initiation. Tranquil. Respectable. Biography. Biographical. Vocab review. Repeat after me. Impact. Tedious. Fret. Clad. Quenched. Gloat. Peel. Again, impact. Tedious. Fret. Clad. Quenched. Gloat. Peel. Let's plug them in here. When you feel delight or satisfaction, you gloat. When you feel delight or satisfaction, you gloat. Another word for effect is impact. Another word for effect is impact. When bells ring loudly, they peal. When bells ring loudly, they peal. When something is put out, it is quenched. When something is put out, it is quenched. All right, now let's go into today's reading. Chapter 30, Respectable Huck Joins the Gang. Before we begin, let's look at our focus questions today. Comprehension. How did Tom convince... So one, how did Tom convince Huck to be respectable? Two, why do you think people treasured and repeated the boy's comments? Three, why did Huck run away from the widow Douglas? Four, the story says that when Huck stayed with the widow Douglas, civilization shut him in and bound him hand and foot. Explain what that statement means. And five... Do you think Tom would ever run away from Aunt Polly? Explain your answer. Now let's begin today's reading. So again, chapter 30, last chapter, Respectable Huck joins the gang. Tom and Huck's fortune made a mighty stir in the poor little village of St. Petersburg. So vast a sum, all in actual cash, seemed next to incredible. It was talked about, gloated over, and glorified. Every haunted house in the village and the neighbor neighboring villages was taken apart plank by plank, and its foundations dug up in search for hidden treasure, and not by boys, but by men. Whenever Tom and Huck appeared, they were courted, admired, and stared at. The boys could not remember that their remarks had had any impact before, but now their savings were treasured and repeated. Everything they did seemed somehow remarkable, and they had evidently lost the power of doing common things. The village paper even published biographical sketches of them. The widow Douglas put Huck's money in the bank, and Aunt Polly did the same for Tom. Each lad had an income now, and was simply amazing a dollar for every day of the year. It was just what the minister got. A dollar and a quarter a week would board, lodge, and school a boy in those simple days, and clothe him and wash him, too, for that matter. Judge Thatcher had, high, had a high opinion of Tom, and he had no common boy would ever have got his daughter out of the cave. When Becky told her father about her father, how Tom had taken her punishment at school, the judge was visibly moved. 
He hoped Tom would become a great lawyer someday. He said Tom would be admitted to the best law school in the country. The widow Douglas introduced Huck into society. No dragged, no, dragged him to, into society, hurled him into society, and his sufferings were almost more than he could bear. The widow's servants kept him clean and neat, combed and brushed. They put him to bed nightly in sheets that had not one little spot or wrinkle. He had to eat with a knife and fork. He had to use his napkin, a cup, and a plate. He had to learn to read the Bible, and he had to go to church. He had to talk so properly that speech became ridiculous in his mouth. Whenever he turned, civilization shut him in and bound him hand and foot. There's one of the questions. Huck bravely endured his miseries for three weeks, and then one day he turned up missing. For 48 hours, the widow hunted for him everywhere in great distress. The public were profoundly concerned. They searched high and low. They dragged the river for his body. Early the third mor morning, Tom Sawyer wisely went poking among some old empty barrels down behind the slaughterhouse, and he found Huck in one of them. Huck had slept in them, had slept there. He had just breakfasted upon some stolen odds and ends of food and was resting now in comfort. He was unwashed, uncombed, and clad in the same old ruin of rags that he had in the days when he was free and happy. There's the answer to another question. Tom told him the trouble he had been causing and urged him to go home. Huck's face lost its tranquil look. Huck said, don't talk about it, Tom. I've tried it, and it don't work. It don't work, Tom. It ain't for me. I ain't used to it. The widow's good to me and friendly, but I can't stand her ways. She makes me get up just at the same time every morning. She makes me wash, and the servants comb, comb me to all to thunder. She won't let me sleep in the woodshed. I got to wear them bl blamed clothes that just smothers me, Tom. They don't seem to let any air through them somehow, and they're not, and they're so rotten nice that I can't sit down nor lay down nor roll around anywhere. I ain't slid on a hill for, well, it appears to be years. I go to church and sweat and sweat. I hate them endless sermons. I can't catch a fly in there. I got to wear shoes all Sunday. The widow son, the widow eats by a bell. She goes to bed by a bell. She gets up by a bell. Everything's so off, awful regular, a body can't stand it. Well, everybody does it that way, Huck. Tom, it don't make no difference. I ain't everybody, and I can't stand it. It's awful to be tied up. And food comes too easy. I don't take no interest in food that way. I got to ask to go a fishing. I got to ask to go a swimming. Darn if I ain't got to go, got to ask to do everything. The widow wouldn't let me yell, nor stretch, nor scratch before folks. I never see such a woman. I had to leave, Tom. I had to. And besides, that school's going to open, and I have to go to it. Well, I wouldn't stand that, Tom. Huck continued, looky here, Tom. Being rich ain't what it's cracked up to be. It's just a worry and a worry and a sweat and a sweat and a, wa a wishing you was dead all the time. Now these clothes suits me, and the barrel suits me, and I ain't ever going to shake them anymore. Tom, I would never go into all this trouble if it hadn't been for that money. You just take my share of it, of it along with yours, and give me a dime sometimes, and you go apologize to the widow for me. Oh, Huck, you know I can't do that. It ain't fair. And besides, if you'll try this thing just a while longer, you'll come to like it. Like it? Yes. The way I'd like a hot stove if it was to sit on it. The way I'd like a hot stove if I was to sit on it long enough. No, Tom, I won't be rich and I won't live in them cussed houses. I like the woods and the river and the barrels and I'll stick to them too. Blame it all. Just when we've got guns in a cave and I'll fix to rob, here's this darn foolishness that's got to come up and spoil it all. Tom saw his opportunity. Looky here, Huck. Being rich ain't going to keep me back from turning in from turning robber. No. Are you serious, Tom? 
just as serious as I am sitting here. But Huck, we can't let you into the gang if you ain't respectable, you know? Huck's joy was quenched. Can't let me in, Tom? Tom, ain't you always been friendly to me? You wouldn't shut me out, would you, Tom? You wouldn't do that now, would you, Tom? Huck, I wouldn't want to. And I don't want to. But what would people say? Why, they'd say, hump. Tom Sawyer's gang, pretty low characters, in it? They, they'd mean you, Huck. You wouldn't like that, and I wouldn't. Huck was silent for some time. He was engaged in a mental struggle. Finally, he said, well, I'll go back to the widow for a month and tackle it and see if I can come to stand it. If you let me belong to the gang, Tom. All right. Huck, it's a deal. Come along and I'll ask the widow to go easy on you, Huck. Will you, Tom? Now, will you? That's good. I hope she's go she'll go easy on some of the th roughest things. When are you going to start the, the gang and turn robbers? Oh, right away. We'll get the boys together and have the initiation tonight, maybe. Have the witch? Have the initiation. What's that? It's to swear to stand by one another and never to tell the gang secrets, even if you're chopped to bits. You stick up for the members of the gang. That's great. That's great, Tom, I'll tell you. Well, I bet it is, and all the swearing's got to be done at midnight in the lonesomeness, awfulest place you can find. A haunted house is the best, but they're all ripped up now. Well, midnight's good anyway, Tom. Yes, so it is, and you've got to swear on a coffin and sign it with blood. Now, that's more like it. Why, it's a million times better than pirating. I'll stay with wi the widow till I, ri till I rot, Tom, and if I get to be a famous robber and everybody talking about me, I reckon she'll be proud she snaked me in out of the wet. And that concludes today's reading. And our second reading book. Woohoo. So you have outlining to do. Make an outline for the following passage. Write the main idea and three supporting details for each paragraph. Use complete sentences. So because it's our last one, all you need to do is write the main idea for this paragraph, this paragraph, Oh, just these two. I'll read them to you. The Widow Douglas introduced Huck into society, and his sufferings were almost there, almost more than he could bear. The Widow's servants kept him clean and neat, combed and brushed. They put him to bed nightly in sheets that had not one little spot or stain. He had to eat a knife and a fork, and he had to go to church. Wherever he turned, civilization shut him in and bound him hand and foot. What is the main idea of this paragraph? Next paragraph. He bravely endured his miseries for three weeks and then one day turned up missing. For 48 hours, the widow hunted for him everywhere in great distress. The public were profoundly concerned. They searched high and low and dragged the river for, for his body. Early the third morning, Tom Sawyer wisely went poking among some old empty barrels down behind the slaughterhouse and he found Huck in one of them. What's the main idea of this paragraph? Logic. Here, here's a rule of logic. Just because you know about one part doesn't mean you know about another part. The following statement by a writer breaks the rule. Frank's house is in Danville. His house is painted blue. Debbie's house is also in Danville, but her house, her house must also be painted blue. What is the whole? What are the two parts? Which part do you know something about? Which part does the writer draw a conclusion about? What does the writer conclude about that part? Comprehension. How did Tom convince Huck to be respectable? Why do you think people treasured and repeated the boy's comments? Why did Huck run away from the widow Douglas? The story says that when Huck stayed with the widow Douglas, civilization shut him in and bound him hand and foot. Explain what that statement means. And do you think Tom would ever run away from Aunt Polly? Explain your answer. Your writing prompt. What do you think Tom, Huck, and Becky will do when they grow up? Continue the story of Tom and Huck and Becky. 
Think about the following questions before you begin. Will Huck stay with the widow Douglas? Will Tom, Becky, and Huck go to college? Will Tom and Becky get married? What jobs will Tom, Becky, and Huck have? Will Tom, Becky, and Huck still be friends? And make your story at least 100 words long. All right, independent work begins now. Get busy. Reach out to me on Teams if you need help.